Terry, now let's debate this. Uh, defense attorney Jennifer Wilmot took a page out of Prosecutor Juan Martinez's book and went after clinical psychologists' um, experience and research on Jody, basically saying uh, this prosecution psychologist is not qualified. Sort of taking a page from Prosecutor Juan. Listen to this nasty exchange, and then we're going to debate it. They did find some ins inconsistencies of what she was saying. You know what? Um, the interesting thing is, is you're talking to me about inconsistencies, but that's not what we're talking about. According to the falsified traumatic event that she was referring to. This falsified traumatic event that you want to keep talking about. If somebody, so if somebody's assaulted and their life is threatened by someone they know, then that's not traumatic. All right, let's debate it with our panel. The defense trying to discredit this witness. Um, is it a sign that they're desperate? That, hey, this case is coming to an end and uh, clearly the jurors from the questions that they asked the defense experts do not believe that Jody Aries is a battered woman and they don't believe she's suffering from PS PTSD. And this prosecution expert is saying, you're right, jurors. She is not a battered woman. She doesn't suffer from PTSD. Let's start with Jordan Rose for the prosecution. This is a desperate attempt by the defense to discredit this witness because the best they can do is say she's younger than our expert witness and she administered an old test, not a bad test, but an old test to Jody. It's just, it's a who do you believe? Their expert who is compassionate towards Jody to a fault or this very, very stable on the witness stand factual witness and I think you go for the factual prosecution witness. Brian Silver for the defense. Listen, you don't bring a slingshot to a gunfight, all right? And if you're going to challenge Elise LaViolette, who's been doing this since Jimmy Carter was president, you don't put someone on the stand who just got their master's degree in 2009. And it's got nothing to do with her age. It's about her experience. And guess what? She doesn't have experience when it comes to domestic violence. And that is the essence of Elise's testimony, and that's the essence of this rebuttal. So no, he does not get passing marks on this. All right, Lisa Bloom, legal analyst, avo.com. Well, the defense expert testimony is based on a lie, a lie that the that Jody and Travis were the victim of intruders who assaulted them. I know I don't know how much experience you need to say to a jury you can't do a psychiatric diagnosis based on a lie, and that's the testimony of the prosecution expert. Except the fact that she picks and chooses. Okay, she'll say get take the stand and tell us that Jody's a liar, but then when it comes to bolstering her diagnosis of borderline personality disorder that she believes that Jody was suicidal. So this witness is picking and choosing the evidence that she relies on in her diagnosis. And that's amateur. And guess what? Wilmot's going to chew her up for it and then spit her out because that proves she does not have credibility. Well, we know Jody's a liar. Jody's had to admit to a number of lies. She told three different stories to the police before they finally got her to acknowledge that she was, in fact, the killer. Those are some pretty big lies accusing other people yeah, but here's the of difference. what she did. Here, here is the main difference. The defense version of this case is that Jody is a person who has told lies and who has told the truth. And it's a question of when is she doing each. Whereas the prosecutor's position is that you can't believe anything. So if you're right. going to maintain you can't believe anything, your expert rebuttal witness cannot be a picker and a chooser. She's got to pick a side. And that's why she doesn't have credibility. And that's Jordan. why the defense is going to destroy her in the end. 